Hi, my name is John Kohler, and welcome to Tech Topics. This video is about enterprise data center networking and Nutanix, and is part one of a multi-part series. The first thing we're going to do is quickly level set about the different types of network architectures that exist in most modern data centers. Those can be summarized very quickly by three-tier networks and leaf and spine networks. We'll talk about three-tier first. So regardless of network architecture, all of them exist to connect some sort of device or services to the outside world. In Nutanix's case, that's called a node. Now, each node is an x86 server with some uh, sort of network hardware configuration on it. We'll talk about that in a later video. But for now, we're going to be talking about three-tier architecture. Now, <clears throat> three-tier network architecture consists of what's called an access layer, an aggregation layer or distribution layer, depending on who you talk to, and a core or edge layer. Now, the access layer is where Nutanix connects. These are typically network switches that are at the top of the rack, middle of the row, or end of the row, and are connected through different types of network cabling technologies. We'll talk about those in a later video. For now, for this diagram, we've got two access switches, access one and access two. These are redundantly connected to the Nutanix node like this. They're almost always connected to each other with some sort of interconnection mechanism. And we can talk about those in a later video. <clears throat> to get towards the outside world, the access layer connects to the aggregation or distribution layer. Much like the nodes connect to the access layer, the access layer connects to the aggregation layer in a redundant manner, typically configured like this. And just like the access layer, we've got two switches here, aggregation switch one and aggregation switch two, and these are also almost always connected to each other like this. Now, to get all the way out of the data center to the outside world, to the internet, to some <coughs> uh, metropolitan or wide area network, the aggregation layer connects to the core routing or edge layer here. Uh, just like uh, the aggregation and access layer, we have two redundant devices here to make sure that we don't have any single points of failure, core one and core two. These are typically connected to the aggregation layer like this and sometimes like this. Now, there may be other devices within your enterprise data center that the workloads that run on Nutanix interact with like network security devices, firewalls, IPSs, IDSs, load balancers, and so on. Depending on what those devices are and how their manufacturer recommends they be connected, they may be connected at the core or edge layer, they may be, then, and they may be connected at the aggregation or access layer. We can talk about those in a later section. Now we're going to talk about leaf and spine networks. OK, so let's take a look at leaf and spine architectures. In contrast to a three-tier network, a leaf and spine network has two different levels. A leaf level and a spine level. Pretty simple. So a leaf level, much like the access layer on a three-tier network, is composed of at least two switches. This provides redundant connectivity to the Nutanix architecture. So if we have a single <coughs> Nutanix node, it needs to be redundantly connected to the rest of the network. So we'll have at least two cables connecting these two different layer layers. We've got leaf one and leaf two. The leaf layer has to connect to the rest of the network as well, so it connects to what's called the spine layer. This is typically at least two switches. Now, where the three-tier network and the leaf and spine network start to diverge is the way that <coughs> scalability is achieved. Scalability in a leaf and spine architecture is maintained by scaling out. In a three-tier network, it's usually scaling in what's called a pod architecture, where you build one pod out and you kind of wash, rinse, and repeat. That can lead to silos within the enterprise data center and can be difficult to manage. Leaf and spine networks, by contrast, <coughs> can be scaled out where you have multiple spines. So instead of just redundantly connecting a leaf layer to just two spine layers, if we need more bandwidth or more connectivity, we can connect even more spines to this layer. So the resulting diagram for redundant connectivity 
looks a little like this. Now, with the Nutanix web scale architecture, when we want to scale our clusters, we scale them out, much like Leaf and Spine Network scales out. You'll always find that Leaf switches have some sort of limitation in the amount of network connections that they can take, usually 48 ports or so of 10 gig connectivity with some ports for 40 gig connectivity. The connectivity in between a leaf layer and a spine layer is typically 40 gigs, but can also be 10 gigs in some architectures. So we've talked about the two most common types of enterprise data center network topologies, three tier and leaf and spine. Personally, I like leaf and spine the best because it's simply the most scalable, which matches the scalability characteristics of the Nutanix architecture. Join us for the next video where we're going to be talking about the specifics of how Nutanix nodes connect to the leaf or access layer. Thank you for watching.